arc to Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Hmm, said Goldilocks looking around the room. I wouldn't mind a little sit down. I feel rather full. What a big chair. I would like to sit on that chair. But she didn't like it at all. Too tall, too wobbly. Well, maybe I will sit on the middle-sized chair. She sat down with a thud. Ouch! Too low. Well, that small chair is sweet and much more my side, said Goldilocks as she sat down on the smallest chair. Oh, this is just perfect for me. But it wasn't, and the chair broke into three pieces. Oh dear, said Goldilocks. Well, it was an accident. I don't suppose anyone would mind if they knew it was an accident. As Goldilocks picked herself up off the floor, she caught sight of the twisty wooden stairs. Stairs? I wonder why I didn't notice those before. The answer is because she was too busy eating other people's porridge and breaking other people's furniture to have possibly noticed the little staircase winding up through the house. Now I wonder what is up there, she whispered. Well, I think she knew very well what was up there, because most people do. But you see, Goldilocks just wanted to see for herself. And so she climbed the stairs three at a time, snagging her stripy woolen stockings as she went. I'm sure you will not be surprised to hear that at the top of the stairs she found a bedroom, and in that bedroom were three little wooden beds, neatly made, covered in three neat quilts, with three plump feather cushions. What a dear little room, she said, looking around. If this were my house, I would sleep in the big bed. But it wasn't as comfortable as it looked. Oh, too hard, complained Goldilocks. You would think she would have learned by now. But maybe this middle-sized bed will be just more bouncy. And it was, but it was too bouncy. It made her feel a little dizzy. Hmm, too soft. I suppose that the little bed might be all right for me. And, as I am sure you are already guessed, it was. Oh yes, just right, said Goldilocks, slipping under the covers. I'm so <sighs> terribly, terribly sleepy. Maybe I will just lie down just for three minutes. I'd better take my shoes off though, she said, noticing the mud that she had quite forgotten to clean off. So Goldilocks carefully placed her neat little red shoes neatly by the side of the bed and fell asleep. When the three bears came back from their walk, they were very, very hungry. They all sniffed the air, but it wasn't porridge they could smell. You see, bears have very keen noses and right away they could sniff a very different kind of smell. <laughs> they looked and moaned. Father Bear noticed at once that something was quite wrong. Things are not as they should be, said Father Bear, picking up an apple. Father Bear walked over to the table and looked into his bowl. He picked up his spoon. Who has been eating my porridge? Hmm, said Mother Bear. Who has been eating my porridge? Oh, said Small Bear. Who has been eating my porridge? And look, they've gobbled it all up. A large tear welled up in Small Bear's eye and rolled down his little face. He was a sensitive type and also very fond of porridge. Father Bear looked round to see if he could see where the greedy whoever it was was. But he saw his chair and he wasn't too pleased. 
Who has been sitting in my chair? Father Bear did not like people sitting in his chair. Mother Bear looked at her chair, who was not pleased either. Who has been sitting in my chair? And Small Bear was least pleased of them all, because he no longer even had a chair. Who's been sitting in my chair? And look, it's been, been broken into pieces. Mother Bear looked round, and what she saw was a thread of black wool winding up the stairs. Things are not as they should be, said Mother Bear, picking up the end of the woolen thread. The three bears started to climb the stairs. Creak, creak, creak. But Goldilocks didn't stir, not even a lock of her golden hair. So soundly was she asleep. When the bears got up to the top of the stairs, they listened carefully because bears have very sensitive ears. All they could hear was a tiny, tiny sound, almost like the sound of a sleeping owl. <laughs> Father Bear looked in his bed. Who has been sleeping in my bed? He snarled. Mother Bear looked at her bed. The quilt was all ruffled and the pillows unplumped. Who has been sleeping in my bed? She growled. Well, whispered Small Bear, whoever's been sleeping in my bed? And by the way, look, they are still here. All three bears peered at the sleeping girl lying in the small bear's bed. Growl, growl, growl. And exactly then, Goldilocks woke from her slumbers to see three differently sized bears staring down at her. Now, Goldilocks was a curious girl, but she wasn't curious enough to strike up a conversation with bears. Oh, no, no, no. Goldilocks sprang from the bed quick as quick jumped out of the tiny open window. Happily for her, it wasn't too big a drop. And she ran, and she ran, and she ran as fast as she could back to her cottage at the edge of the forest. I can tell you that her mother wasn't too pleased because she had missed breakfast. Not that Goldilocks minded because she was still quite full with porridge, and she was so relieved to be home in one piece that she didn't even mind being sent to her room but she had forgotten two little things. Hmm. Two little red shoes. When her mother realised, she was extremely cross, as you might imagine, and Goldilocks was very sad because she loved her little red shoes. But Small Bear, well, he was very happy indeed. Mother Bear made him some more porridge, Father Bear mended his chair, and Small Bear had an almost brand new pair of little red shoes to wear when he went for his walk before breakfast. And Small Bear looked after them very carefully indeed. The end. I hope you really enjoyed that story. I've had lots of fun reading it to you. I love the words and I love the pictures. So I hope you enjoy. Stay safe, be well, have fun and see you soon. Bye.